So there are two kinds of people who run for office, and one category is really big, one category is really small. The big category is people who just want to get to office because they want to prove something to their apps and their alcoholic fathers or fill some empty space inside or have power over you. That's almost everybody. Then there's a small category of people who run for office because they really believe something and they've got something to say. They really mean it. You almost never see these people. One of them is J.D. Vance. He didn't need to run for office, but he is. He's running for Senate in Ohio. And since the second he announced, places like the Daily Beast and the Washington Post and the Atlantic, the axis of protectors of the ruling class, have gone crazy. They hate him. They really hate him. And that's how you know he means it. Well, the latest example came on Friday in Alexandria. J.D. Vance made a pretty obvious point. He said the childless left, that's how he put it, lacks, quote, physical commitment to the future of this country. Quote, why is this just a normal fact of life for the leaders of our country to be people who don't have a personal and direct stake in it via their own offspring? That's what he asked, and they went completely bananas. So we thought it'd be interesting to talk to J.D. Vance about what he meant and what it's like to be attacked for saying things that are so obviously true. He joins us tonight. J.D. Vance, thanks so much for coming on. So um, what, tell us what, that was just a very short snippet of a much longer speech, a really interesting speech that people, I think, should read. But what were you saying? Thanks, Tucker. And by the way, if folks want to help us out, jdvance.com, every little bit helps if you can throw us a couple bucks. But look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question and propose that maybe if we want a healthy ruling class in this country, we should invest more, we should vote more, we should support more people who actually have kids, because those are the people who ultimately have a more direct stake in the future of this country. Man, if you had called for, I don't know, lowering tax rates to zero or invading Canada or, you know, I don't, I don't really know what, making the death penalty mandatory for people who don't get the vaccine, something really radical, they wouldn't even have noticed. The Atlantic would have just nodded. But saying something like that drove them, like, insane. Why? Well, I think first is because it actually hit a nerve. I mean, these people recognize that they're unhappy. They live in one-bedroom apartments in New York City. They've played their entire lives to win a status game. They're obsessed with their jobs. They're obsessed uh, with their wealth and with their fortunes. And they look at middle America, people who are actually pretty happy with their lives and the choices right. that they've made, and they hate normal Americans for choosing family over these ridiculous DC and New York status games. And I think because of that, they just get so angry when somebody calls it what, is it what it is. It's acceptable if they ignore that it never happens, but when somebody calls out that, look, if you're a miserable cat lady, you should not force your misery on the rest of the country. They just get really upset about it. And I think, by the way, Tucker, it's a good thing that they get upset about it. It suggests that they know that we're hitting a nerve, not just in this campaign, but with this message that we should invest in American families in this country. If nothing else, we should be about healthy, stable families. Do you think that this would be a happier country if it were run by happier people? I definitely do. It makes total sense, right? Happier people would make for a happier country. And it's not just the leaders of the left, of course. It's not just the Democrat politicians. No. You know this, Tucker. The most miserable people in the mainstream media are these mediocre journalists who have their yeah. entire sense of self-worth wrapped up in their crappy jobs instead of in their families. People who know where they came from, people who go home at night and see the face of a smiling kid, whatever their profession, I think they're happier, I think they're healthier, and they're gonna be better prepared to actually lead this country. And the problem that I have, especially as we were entering this period of COVID obsession again, is that we have so many people proposing we mask our children again. Look, the people who are proposing it, they don't have to go home to a child at the end of the day. If they did, right. I don't think they'd be proposing all these ridiculous restrictions again. Yeah, they're imposing their psychodramas and their neuroses on the rest of us. And we should say, you know, no thanks. We're going to be happy. <laughs> they hate you when you say that. Janie Vance, great to see you tonight. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.